we are in front of one of the most mysterious robberies in the new history. More than 1.9 billion worth of artworks disappeared without any trace. Who stole 1.9 billion of art? The puzzling case unfolds. Notorious art thief caught after stealing 1.9 billion of artworks. The art thief who fooled the world. The investigator couldn't believe that one person stole 1.9 billion in valuable works by these simple tools. Screwdriver, antenna, and an oversized jacket. These are all the tools that Stephen Breitweiser needed to steal works of art worth $1.9 billion. How did he do all this with these simple tools? Well, let's dive in this incredible story of the man who stole $1.9 billion in front of the guard's eyes. The beginning of our story, March 1995, was in Switzerland, specifically in a town called Greer. The protagonist of this story is a French man named Stephen Breitweiser. Stephen was traveling to this town and was accompanied by his girlfriend, Anne Catherine, to visit an ancient medieval castle. This castle was called Greer Castle. It is currently a museum that contains various antiquities and art pieces dating back to the Middle Ages. This castle had corridors and large rooms dedicated to paintings, meaning all its corridors and walls were filled with these panels. When Stephen and his girlfriend walked between these corridors and rooms and saw the beautiful paintings, one caught Stephen's eye. This painting was the work of a German artist named Christian Bale Hans Dietrich. The painting was a picture of a woman wearing a dress, and her eyes were directed outside the painting directly as if she was looking at the person who saw in the painting, our friend Stephen. At this moment, came to have a strong desire to steal this painting, although he had never stolen anything before in his life. The sudden feeling took over his entire being. He was saying this painting should be mine, so he simply told his sweetheart Catherine that he wanted to steal the painting. Of course, everyone expects that Catherine will end him and tell him that you will ruin our life and put us in danger. But Anne Catherine simply said to him, well, excellent idea, let's do it. So she went with him to the museum and began observing the place and the corridors, which were relatively empty. The museum at that time had very few tourists and the security was very weak. The guards were counting on fingers and there were no surveillance cameras. So while Catherine was watching the corridors, Stephen began to undo a painting from its large frame. He unpacked the painting very carefully, then folded it and hid it under the large jacket he was wearing and simply took Catherine out of the castle. They simply carried out an easy theft without any complications, but this is the beginning of the greatest thief of paintings and artworks in history. This theft made Stefan feel a strong desire to own the paintings. He had always loved art and loved to contemplate beautiful paintings, but the experience of owning one of them gave him a different feeling, a special feeling that he wants to grow up with and keep repeating it. Hence, Stefan began stealing art. He traveled from country to country and from exhibition to exhibition. He toured all of Europe and carried out about 240 thefts of 172 art galleries that were present in seven different European countries. Nobody ever caught it. Was this because Stephen was so professional? What kind of complex operations was he planning to get out safely every time? Well, these operations were very simple, like the first operation that he did and his beloved Catherine became his permanent partner in these operations, so she was assigned to monitor the corridors. Stephen's task is to unscrew the screws that fix the painting to the frame, and after he finishes, he takes it off, folds it, and puts it under his large jacket. But is it reasonable that the security is weak to this degree? The secret was simply Stephen's intelligence when choosing his targets. If Stephen targeted museums and large galleries, he would have been easily arrested because these museums are always heavily guarded. But Stephen was focused on poorly guarded galleries and museums. The only tools Stephen used in his operations were the screwdriver he used first to unscrew the paintings from their frames, an antenna of the kind that expands, 
which he used to deflect the surveillance cameras from the galleries he was stealing, and of course, the large jacket that he used to hide the paintings inside after folding them. Of course, the most important tool he had was his self-confidence and the coolness of his nerves, which kept him calm under any pressures that might occur during the operation. This amazing confidence made him able to steal from the same gallery or museum more than once. He only disguises himself with something simple as a mustache or a beard and steals again from the same place. His self-confidence was something out of the ordinary. According to estimates by the New York Times, the total value of the paintings and artwork he stole was about $1.9 billion. Imagine the number with all this Stephen did not appear to be any sign of wealth and affluence. On the contrary, he was living a below average life. He was working as a waiter in a restaurant and his girlfriend, Catherine, was working as a nurse. Imagine that they were living in the attic of Stephen's mother's house. They weren't even able to provide themselves with a decent home. So why did they live like this despite all these thefts and the high value of the paintings he had? The reason is simply that Stephen has not sold any of the paintings he stole. Okay, why? The reason is that he was not stealing these paintings to benefit financially. He was stealing them because he loves the art in these paintings. If we go back to the first theft we talked about, Stephen stole this woman's painting because he was actually impressed with her beauty and the art in it. And from that time, he stole the paintings that he really liked and was impressed with, not stealing because of their high value. Every corner and every void in the walls of Stephen's modest apartment was filled with paintings worth up to $1.9 billion. A strange thing, but that was the thing that gave Stephen a huge advantage as an art thief. This is one of the reasons why the police couldn't catch him because in fact, most art thieves get caught after a short time once they start selling the things they stole. This is one of the most important reasons why Stephen was not caught despite the hundreds of thefts that he committed. But Stephen had a problem of another kind, which is artistic greed. He wanted to grow his artistic collection more, so he was never satisfied and he could not stop. So he continued to commit thefts without any clear goal or a specific point at which he intended to stop. He continued like this until he made a fatal mistake that turned his life upside down. This theft was in Switzerland, specifically in the museum of a city called Lausanne, and the year was 1997. Stephen and Catherine entered the museum, identified the painting as a target, and began their usual process. Catherine observes the corridors, and Stephen carries out the process of extracting the painting from its frame. After Stephen unscrewed the screws from the frame, he took out the painting, folded it, and inserted it into the large jacket, as usual, and then calmly and confidently went to the door of the museum. But while they were leaving the museum, one of the guards noticed that Stephen was trying to hide something under his jacket. The guard began to feel suspicious that something strange was happening. So the guard went and took a quick tour around the museum and noticed that there was a missed painting he ran after Stephen and Catherine who came out of the museum and got into their car. But before the car start to move, the security guard stopped the car and prevented Stephen from escaping. And because a police station was located close to the place, the area had many policemen present, so Stephen had no choice but to surrender himself to the police without resistance. Stephen was detained in the police station awaiting his trial the next day. The trial was very small and simple because the crime was not considered a major one. And the painting that Stephen was stealing was not a painting of high value or of great importance. So Stephen came crying and pretending to be remorseful in court. He said that this was the first time he had done anything like this in his life and that it was just a momentary decision due to a strange impulse that possessed him to own a painting. Stephen did not have a criminal record and the representation of remorse and regret to the judge was very convincing. All these reasons made the judge convinced and released him without a heavy penalty. The judge's ruling was that Stefan remains under an eight-month supervision period and that he must leave Switzerland immediately, and he will not be able to enter it again until his period of supervision ends, which means after eight months. This incident did not affect Stephen at all, and during the years that followed, 
He continued with the usual theft in various European countries, except for Switzerland, of course. Four years later, in 2001, Stefan felt that the robbery attempt he was caught in had been forgotten and the time has come for him to return to Switzerland again. So he and his sweetheart Catherine simply boarded the plane and traveled to Switzerland, and then they went to the same city where he was arrested four years ago, Lausanne. But this time, the operation was not in the same museum. In this museum, Stephen set his eye on an old antique trumpet that was inside a glass showcase, and it was a little more difficult to steal than the paintings. However, he was able to steal the trumpet, as usual, under his overcoat, and he left the museum without any problem. Stephen was too self-assured and sometimes to the point of arrogance. Two days later, he decided to go back in disguise to the same museum and steal a new piece of art. He entered confidently with Catherine and put an eye on the painting he was targeting. And Catherine began carrying out her usual task of observing the passages and he began the process of removing the painting from its frame. After he finished removing the painting, he hid it under his coat as usual, but this time he found himself surrounded by guards from every direction. What happened is that one of these guards remembered his face from the operation he had done two days before. This guard felt that this man was suspicious. He told his colleagues, and they moved to monitor him and caught him red-handed while he was stealing the painting from its place. After that, Stefan was arrested and detained at the police station. During police investigations with him, Stefan tried to play the same game that he played last time and told them that it was just a momentary tendency to steal and that he regretted everything else. But this time the excuse was very weak because in the beginning he stole the trumpet and then came back to steal the board. It is impossible for this to be a momentary tendency. These are all pre-planned robberies. After searching and investigating, the investigators obtained the report regarding the previous theft in the same city when the judge's sympathy occurs. In the year 1997, the investigators knew that they were in front of a serial thief, so the Swiss police contacted the French police and told them the details of the case. The French police obtained a warrant to search Stephen's apartment, which, as we said, was located in the attic of his mother's house. The police entered the house, and there was a surprise. The apartment was completely empty of any paintings or artwork. There was no trace of anything in it. Just how did this thing happen? How did all the artworks disappear? Well, what happened was that Catherine, Stephen's girlfriend, at the moment of his arrest, immediately called his mother and told her that he had been arrested and told her that she must hide all the stolen paintings and artworks without any delay. Indeed, the mother moved as quickly as she could and got rid of all the art that were in the apartment and got rid of them. She simply burned part of it, and when she felt that she could not burn the rest, she threw it into the water canal in the city. Several days later, some people noticed that there are paintings in the water canal and when the authorities came and began to extract these paintings, they knew that all of them were stolen paintings from different museums around Europe, and some of these paintings were worth millions. After the news spread, the Swiss police who were holding Stefan were informed. Of course, Stefan didn't know anything about what happened. The investigators said that they had obtained a secret treasure. Stefan began to confess and told them everything. Even the police and the investigators did not imagine that one person could be the one who stole all these paintings and artworks from various European countries, from more than 170 galleries. But Stefan confessed everything. After his confession, he was sentenced to three years in prison, but he only spent two years in it. And Stefan was not the only one who was arrested. Catherine was also imprisoned for six months. As for his mother, she was imprisoned for a year and a half because she was the one who destroyed the paintings. His beloved Catherine left him after she got out of prison. She did not want to continue her life with him anymore. As for his mother, she never communicated with him. Stefan lived very bad years after he got out of prison. He lived alone and poor and became depressed most of the time. Stefan tried to write a book about his life in order to earn some money to live and called the book, 
Confessions of an Art Thief, but the book did not achieve significant sales and failed commercially. After Stefan felt that the doors were closed in his face, he decided to go back again to stealing artworks, but this time it was not for the sake of art. His aim was to sell the paintings and get money. And as we said, the thieves who try to sell the stolen art are mostly the ones who get caught. Indeed, he was arrested in the year 2011 while he was trying to sell a unit of these paintings that he stole, and after they searched the apartment, they found more than 30 stolen paintings, so he was arrested for the second time. Like last time, he was sentenced to three years in prison, and after he got out of prison this time, he remained under surveillance, and he was arrested for the third time in the year 2019 when he was caught trying to sell some antiquities on eBay. These items were most likely stolen before he was arrested. After this arrest, which took place in the year 2019, Stefan did not show any news after that. However, Stefan Breitweiser immortalizes his name as the greatest art thief in history, and probably there is no one who will be competing for this title anytime soon. Here we come to the end of our story. If you like it, do not forget to like and subscribe and activate the bell button so that you can receive new videos. Bye.